Welcome to our second session today. My name is Josh. I'm a GMAT club. Um, and, and this session, we actually have NTU in Singapore. Uh, I was talking to them prior to going live. It is actually midnight in Singapore right now for them. And so they're joining us very late and early, however you want to look at it. Um, and so, Kenny, Regine, thank you for joining us today. I'll go ahead and let you each introduce yourself. After you introduce yourself, feel free to just jump right into your presentation. And after your presentation, I'll come back on and we'll address some questions. Okay, thank you so much, Josh. Thank you so much. And uh, good morning, everybody. And I guess some of you uh, who are watching this is a good evening to you or a good night to you. Uh, as uh, Josh uh, said, it is a midnight over here in Singapore. So as I was telling Kenny, this is our midnight show. Thank you for, you know, uh, watching this with us. So um, I'm Regine. Uh, and together here with me is my colleague. Uh, he's Kenny. So I Hi, oversee... Uh, the specialized master's program over at the Nanyang Business School. Uh, so I look after all the uh, admissions and outreach for the English taught uh, specialized master's program. And we are really very, very excited to be part of this uh, GMAT Club uh, master's fair uh, this morning. And um, today I'll be giving you an overview about the NTU, about Nanyang Business School. And Kenny will be sharing more on the specialized master's program that we offer. So, and at, before we end off this uh, session, there'll be the, you know, the live Q&A uh, uh, segment. So feel free to type in your questions. Yeah, and I will get that, to, uh, we'll answer your question at the end. Yeah, so let me just uh, share my screen. Just give me one moment. Okay, so I guess so everybody can see the screen right here. So I'll kick off the presentation. So, you know, um, in, in my job, I really speak to a lot of uh, prospective candidates. Uh, and a lot of them ask me these questions. You know, there are so many questions. Uh, there are so many programs out there. How do I even start, uh, you know, to consider where uh, to study or what to study? And I hope that after uh, our, you know, sharing uh, this morning, uh, you will consider Singapore as one of your study uh, destinations. So Singapore, uh, you know, we are located in, in Asia. And I think um, it is uh, widely acknowledged that Asia is, uh, you know, the fastest growing economic region in the world. And Singapore being situated uh, in the heart of Asia is really one of the very uh, best place for you to tap on and to leverage on the wider Asia Pacific growth. Uh, and, um, you know, it is easy uh, from Singapore to have good uh, regional assess. And uh, at Singapore, we also have a uh, political uh, stability and also robust infrastructure. Singapore is also well known as a global business hub. Uh, we are a leading uh, finance and business center. And according to the World Economic Forum Competitive Report uh, in 2019, Singapore has take, overtaken the U.S. for the first time to become the most competitive nation in the world. And many uh, MMCs actually set up their regional headquarters in Singapore. And what they need is a pool of highly qualified uh, workforce uh, to work in the organization. And this is where we hope that our graduates uh, will play their part to be part of uh, this pool of talents. Uh, for this organization. And in Singapore, um, if you have been to Singapore, you know that Singapore is a very dynamic, multicultural and multiracial uh, you know, country. Um, we have a unique blend of the East and West. And Singapore is, um, and that makes us really one of the most culturally diverse country in Asia. And this unique uh, experience allowed you to actually, uh, uh, you know, study alongside with uh, classmates from different parts of the world, from different background, and it increases your cultural awareness, which is increasingly vital in our global workplace. Uh, so now I'll share a little bit more about uh, the university, Nanyang Technological University. So uh, it is uh, in short core NTU. So we're established in 1991. And uh, today we are the second largest autonomous university in Singapore. We are a research intensive global university uh, that is not just highly ranked in Asia, but around the world as well. Our expertise are in the area of technology, innovation, and research. 
So these are on this slide, you see some of the latest ranking uh, of the university in the latest QS World University ranking. We are ranked 13th uh, in the world. And for a young university by QS, uh, we have been ranked first uh, for seven consecutive years since 2014. And at the Times Higher Education Young University ranking, we are ranked um, um, uh, uh, second and we have been ranked in the top three uh, consistently as well. So for a young university like NTU, we are very, very proud to be ranked alongside the, you know, um, the world's leading university. So this, uh, what you see here is uh, NTU 2025. So this is a vision that was uh, launched by NTU uh, president uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so this is actually uh, the rank, um, it's a strategic plan for Nanyang Business School uh, that details, um, you know, the education, the research and ambitions goals uh, in for the next five years. So it is NTU's a vision to be a global university that is founded on science and technology, nurturing leaders and creating societal impact through interdisciplinary education and research. So this is uh, what we aim uh, uh, in, in NTU. So right now I'll share a little bit more about the Nanyang Business School. So Nanyang Business School, we are uh, one of Asia leading business school. And being a business college uh, within the, you know, the university, we're able to leverage on NTU strength in research, in innovation and technology. And we are renowned for providing research, uh, being research oriented and providing interdisciplinary uh, industry relevant education. Our NTU brand name as well as the Nanyang Business School brand name is well recognized by companies globally. And NTU is also, uh, you know, uh, accredited by AACSB and AQUIS, which are probably, you know, the world's uh, most uh, recognized uh, quality assurance uh, for business and accounting business studies. Yeah. So for Nayan Business School, uh, you know, uh, this really uh, recapped of the advantages of studying, of having a Nayan Business School education. At Nayan Business School, we aim to equip our graduates, uh, you know, um, to innovate for the future, uh, to lead with impact wherever they go, and to transform with cultural dexterity. So these are the postgraduate programs that we offer at the Nanya Business School. You can see that we offer uh, different uh, MBAs pr uh, program along with uh, different specialized master's program. But for today's uh, sharing, we will be focusing on the English taught specialized master's program only. And, uh, and I will now hand the time over to Kenny, uh, who will be sharing more on these programs with you. Over to you, Kenny. Thanks, Regine. So, um... Thanks for listening in on the programs that we do offer in NTU. We are very proud to be here to share more about the Specialized Masters. So in MBS, uh, Nanyang Business School, uh, in short, we call it MBS, we have four different Specialized Masters. Um, one is the MSc in Accountancy, the MSc in Business Analytics, MSc in Financial Engineering, and last but not least, but the MSc in Marketing Science. So let me just share uh, each and every one in more details. So may I have the next slide, please? So the very first program that we are uh, introducing is the MSc in Business Analytics. This is a very new program. We only had our first intake in July 2020. So our our first batch of students are actually just undergoing through the program. Um, they are going through about seven months already, and they would be um, going towards, uh, they are already embarking on their internships and uh, practicum right now. What we are very focused on is because this is a very new program. We want to make it very future focused. We want to make it very industry relevant. So in terms of where we are designing this course, we actually look at it from a very industry point of view to make sure that whatever we are teaching in the program is very relevant to what the industry is, uh, is having requiring today. So next slide. So this program can be taken either in a full-time or a part-time capacity. Uh, so right now, what you see here is the full-time capacity program. So it's split up into three trimesters. And what you will see here is that in trimester two, which starts in November, and trimester three, you are able to go through what we call a data practicum. Right now, over here on this slide, is called project one and project two. So the projects is very interesting, and it's also something like a very key uh, key 
insight into the program because what we want to do is to allow you to apply what you learn from the program into a real world setting. And what happens is that you can choose to apply your uh, the studies, uh, your whatever you learn in the program into a real world internship with our industry partners. So our industry partners um, have come from very big names, like uh, one of the biggest uh, shopping platform in Southeast Asia, which is Shopee. We also have our inter uh, our students going on to industry projects with places like Capital Land, one of the biggest um, Singapore malls, uh, mall holdings in the uh, in Singapore and in Asia. We also have some other projects like uh, we we have one which is with Johnson Controls. Johnson Controls is a very interesting one because what happens is that uh the students who are embarking on this internship are actually doing a data uh data transformation so digital transformation for the company and what happens is that they are using they are leading the impact using data and trying to re redesign the industry process so let me go to the next one so in terms of the graduates where we hope our graduates are able to go to uh what we will see what we foresee is that they will go into a role such as data scientists data analysts and because of the fact that uh, business analytics is very industry agnostic in the sense that it can be applied to many many different industries you will see that you have to uh you will be able to see the roles being developed and a lot of our students being able to go into different industries and do into different roles next please so for this program what we are looking for is that you have to minimally have a bachelor's degree or uh, gmat or gre is necessary if your degree was not done in english you have to take ielts or tofu work experience is not required for this program similar to many of our specialized masters we don't require work experience next please so the next program that we have is the MSc Marketing Science. This is also a very interesting and new program in the sense that we actually had a revamp of this program in order to make sure that we have all the new cutting edge uh, technology and things that are happening in the marketing world. Why we call it Marketing Science and Marketing uh, is because we want to make sure that um, the program is revamped in order to take into account things like, for example, AI, uh, robotics, even things like um, Con, con, uh, customer relationship management systems, neural marketing and neuroscience are all put into this program because marketing has changed over the last few years and we want to make sure that the uh, knowledge that we teach in this program is as relevant for the students as to the industry. Next, please. So this program is offered on a full-time basis. It is over 12 months, similar. Uh, it's also done over three trimesters. You will see that a lot of it is focusing on how technology and marketing is actually being able to merge into a very different field altogether. So if you look at some of the modules here, you'll see things like digital marketing and uh, things like integrated marketing communications. And what it does is to make a uh, sense of marketing in the digital world today. Next, please. So in terms of the roles that a lot of our students go into, we do believe that they will go into marketing strategies. They will be able to uh, design their digital marketing strategy and also in terms of like SEO and SEM, which is search engine optimization and search, uh, search engine management, you'll be able to see that they will play a very critical role our students will go into. Next, please. So similarly, uh, this program requires at least a bachelor's degree. Uh, unlike the other programs, GMAT or GRE is not compulsory, but if you do have it, I will encourage you to submit it as part of the whole uh, admissions process. It doesn't, uh, if it helps, we, we want to see it. So IELTS and TOEFL is only applicable if your uh, degree was not done in English. Work experience similarly is not required. One thing to note is that we only have two rounds of application. Round one has already over. Round two will be over by 31st of March. So do apply then. Next, please. So the third one is the MSc in Financial Engineering. So for the Financial Engineering, it is a very long-standing program. We have over 20 years of experience in this particular uh, program. We have uh, also been able to have a lot of our students go into, uh, graduates go into very key roles in Financial Engineering. A lot of them are actually now in management, senior management positions in funds and in different types of finance institutes. And this allows us to be able to capitalize on the alumni relations and be able to help 
help us put this uh, our graduates into this pro into their companies and therefore you would see that this program is very highly regarded in the financial engineering field um, one of the things that we do have is this two academic options. Either you want to take CMU uh, with CMU. CMU stands for Carnegie Mellon University, uh, which is based in New York. Um, so let me just touch on it through the academic calendar on this particular track. So uh, the CMU track, which I've just talked about, the Carnegie Mellon University, is an optional track in the sense that when you apply to us, you can choose whether you want to take the CMU track or not. Unlike the other programs, this program is actually done over six mini trimesters, which means that every seven weeks, you'll be taking different modules and you'll be taking the tests. It is very intensive, but it is also very highly regarded because what we are able to do is to place uh, put a very rigorous program together over a very short uh, span of time and be able to place you in very good positions in the financial industry. So in terms of where our students go to, because of the fact that this program is very rigorous, you will see that they go into very uh, key roles into things like portfolio management. They will go into roles such as uh, client facing and all. So it's also because of the rigority of the track. So next. So in terms of where they are going, quant trading is definitely where a lot of our students go into. Uh, we also have a lot of our students go into risk management. So if you are very interested in things like put options, call options, and how to hatch it against the different um, tradings and all, this will really be a very interesting uh, program for you to go into because a lot of our students do go into such roles and to help them manage funds uh, and also different securities. Next, please. So for this program, we do require a bachelor's degree with a strong quantitative background. What I mean by that is that it has to be in, uh, maths intensive. Uh, it can come from an engineering background. It can come from a science background. It doesn't matter. But we do require a strong quantitative background. You are required to take GMAT or GRE. IELTS and TOEFL, uh, as stated previously, as long as your degree is done in English, you don't require it. But if it's not, then you have to take TOEFL or IELTS. Work experience, similarly, is not required. Uh, our deadline for this is coming up very, very closely. It's closing on 28th of February. So I will encourage you very, very strongly to make an application if you haven't done so. Next, please. And last but not least, we have the MSc in Accountancy. This is also a very long-standing program, but we have done a lot of revamp to this because we also want to keep the pace with accountancy with the digital world. So if you see for this uh, particular program, one of the highlights is that we have introduced new modules like machine learning for accounting, data analytics, forensic accounting. And what it does is to make sure that these causes stay relevant, that this uh, accountancy is not just um, something that is uh, based on what is happening in the past, but we also want to make sure that you are equip your, equipping yourself for the future. So you will see that there's a lot of data analytics involved um, towards this accountancy program. Reason being is that that is what the industry is looking for. So in terms of the kind of uh, programs that we have done is that we make sure that it's very industry relevant. And therefore, a lot of our programs, uh, the MSC accountancy, you will see that they have um, different professional qualifications and all uh, in the programs built into it is to ensure that you will stay relevant with our program and in the industry. So this, um, so next slide, please. Yeah, so this program is over 12 months. Uh, this one over three trimesters, each trimester lasting for about four to five months. So what happens is that in this program, you will see that it's a very, um, it's a very rigorous program because you will see that you accounting knowledge would actually be uh, bringing you from the basics, which is accounting for decision making, financial management, and how to even read a ledger in a sense, and also to help you bring towards more um more advanced call, uh, advanced knowledge, things like, for example, how do you use accounting to make strategic decisions and all. And the idea is that we want to build you up in order to be able to do accounting in a very strategic fashion. Next, please. 
So, of course, our students do go into accounting, but we also do see them going into places like financial services. They also go into um, advisories. We also see that accounting um, has also been highlighted in places like in finance and all. And the idea is that accounting knowledge is a necessity for a lot of finance firms. So in that sense, it's something, it's a very professional skill that helps you to open up doors. Next, please. So for this program, we require a bachelor's degree. Um, a GMAT or GRE is necessary. Uh, IELTS or TOEFL, as said, we don't require it if your degree was done in was done in English. But if it's not, then you have to take IELTS or TOEFL. Uh, our application closing date, the next one is on 31st of March. Work experience is similarly not required. So with that, let me just give you an overview of the program. So you will see that this uh, we have done a table up to show you all the different programs and also the fees involved and everything. Everything is done in Singapore dollars. So if you, you know, probably if you are in the US setting, um, right now I think it's about 1.4, 1.4. So one Singapore, uh, one US dollar is to 1.4. Uh, Singapore dollars, so you can do the maths there. So the next insect is in July 2021. So uh, if you haven't applied, do so now because we are a lot of our application are uh, are closing very soon. Uh, we will be closing every all our applications by March this year. So do make an application. So application process is on a rolling basis. So the earlier you apply, the better your chances. Um. So what happens is that if you apply very fast then what will happen is that we will also try to shortlist you faster and then we will uh, shortlist you for an interview. Likely it's going to be online, it's over Zoom. And what we will do is that from that interview, we will make an admission outcome and hopefully we'll be able to see you in Singapore and in NTU in July the same year. So the next slide. So in terms of application, what we are looking, uh, what we require you to submit, uh, all this you can submit online. It's just through, uh, you just need to scan and upload all these documents. So you just need to submit your CV, degree scroll, transcripts, GMAT or GRE score transcript, uh, IELTS or TOEFL, copy of a passport, passport size photos. Your referee reports is very easy. What you need to do is to just nominate two referees, um, just state their emails and they will be uh, sent be sent an, e uh, an email to inform them that you have uh, you have been nominated uh, to be a referee. Please fill up this form. So um, so a lot of people, they do ask what kind of referees are we looking for? We don't have a requir requirement on the referee. Uh, you can be your professors, it can be your internship employers, but usually what we would say is make sure that it's somebody who has a very good uh, sense of your working abilities because that will give us a very good insight as to who you are. Next, please. So one of the things that we pride ourselves as on this um, career uh, careers of our students after they finish our program. So we have set up a GSCDO. GSCDO stands for the Graduate Studies Career Development Office. And what it does is that it, uh, it is there to help our students find jobs. It's also there to help our students find internships, do critics of their resumes, and to also help prepare them for interviews and things like that. So we also have uh, professional workshops, which helps them to improve themselves. Things like, for example, public speaking, uh, how to groom yourselves and things like that. And what it does is to build the confidence of our students to become a better uh, candidate during the job interview. And also, what we uh what we do is that we have uh in we have career fairs. We have also uh session industry sessions where our uh industry partners come to our campus and they do recruitment. They share about the positions that they have, and it's very exciting because we do see a lot of interest by our students. So some of the companies that do come over are. Uh, places like Barclays uh, for our financial engineering student. We have Shopee who come over. So we do get quite a lot of visits by them to come and talk about their companies and to share about the exciting opportunities available to them. Next, please. So let me just run through some of the testimonials of our current students and also some of our alumni. Roy here, he comes from the MSc Marketing Science. He just joined us in July 2020. So you will see that he's very interested in strategic marketing. Roy has a very interesting background. He was 
actually in content uh, creation prior to joining our program. And what it happens is that he was able to use the knowledge that he learned from the program and to make better content videos and to be able to do better in terms of marketing the program. So it's something that really helped him. Next, please. So we have Goyal. Goyal is actually one of our first batch of MSBA students. He's right now doing an internship with Johnson Controls. Johnson Control, as I just now shared, is a very interesting company because they are going through a digital transformation. And, Go and Vivek here, Goyal Vivek here, is actually one of our students who is helping them to do it. Prior to joining the program, Vivek was actually with Microsoft in India. So it was very interesting because he was able to use whatever knowledge he learned in his work and try to make business sense of it. So through the program. Next. Oh, I think you skipped one. Um, I think you skipped one before. Uh, I think this is the one, uh, ah, <laughs> the okay. before one, so, sorry. So, okay, so uh, we have here La Larissa. She graduated last year. She was with our accountancy program. She was from Norway. She was with Accenture. And what happens is that she wanted to have a very um a very good view of what how is it like to be in one of Asia's vibrant city. And he was she was very interested in Singapore. And this became a very good way for her to learn about the culture here and to apply the accounting knowledge that she wants. Next, please. So we have Prasad here. He was from our financial engineering program. He's now with the head, uh, he's now the head of Algon. Uh, algorithmic trading with MTS Gold Group. And what he does is that he shared that the MFE program allowed him to learn about all the different asset classes and to help him to push forward in his career as a trader because he gets to understand how all these different asset classes were moving and how they behave. And that is something that uh, we strive to in the program because we want to make sure that it's very important for our students to be able to apply what they learn uh, in a real world setting. Next, please. So now we're going to the question and answer program uh, segment of this. Of this. Um, so I do see quite a number of questions. So maybe I'll get um, Josh, maybe. Yes, sir. Moderate. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Kenny and Regine. That was a, a phenomenal informational session. Um, We'll go ahead and we'll, we'll dive into some of the questions that uh, came in in the comments. And so um, let's take a look here and see what we got. <clears throat> so obviously, um, you know, COVID has been running rampant across the world. And so that's one of the um, big questions that a lot of prospective students have is, kind of how COVID is going to impact their time in a specific program. And so how has COVID-19 affected their criteria admissions for your international applicants? Okay, uh, maybe I can help to answer this question. Uh, sure. Well, I think uh, for Nyan Business School, um, um, we are very fortunate um, that um, that people are able to still apply to our program uh, and in many parts of where they are, they're still able to, you know, submit uh, their, their GMAT test score or IELTS test score or TOEFL uh, score. Uh, we accept like the GMAT online test as well as the home edition of a TOEFL, et cetera, that is uh, offered by all these testing centers. Uh, because of pandemic, they can't go out to the test center to take the test. So we accept these uh, and we, we do acknowledge that, uh, you know, students may not um, be able to submit them in time. So after the application deadline, we usually give an extension about two weeks for all our applicants to, you know, submit uh, the supporting documents to us. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and so staying on the, the track of COVID is, are there any plans to change the, the incoming class size and composition for this upcoming academic year? Maybe I'll take this. So, yeah. so uh, we have actually set out our plans to have an intake. Uh, different programs have different intake sizes, uh, ranging from 40 to 100, depending on the program's uh, 
capacity and all. So we have not made changes. Uh, we do have a very uh, large confidence that we are able to meet all this class size and composition. Of course, what we are looking for is to make sure that our students are, um, there is a diversity in the program. There is also a terms of, uh, in terms of abilities to make sure that we are getting the best students and best suited students in order to make sure that everyone in the class benefits from the program. Yeah. Perfect. And so let's take a look here. Um, I know a lot of students uh, have the concern if they decide to pursue a degree uh, later in the application cycle um, that they may be at a disadvantage. And so what are the chances of admission or is there a decrease in chances when you apply in the, the later rounds of an application cycle? Well, um, our application is a rolling one, so definitely we are already in the process and have admitted a student into the program as well. So we are aware that, you know, for some programs, uh, you know, our deadline is still like two months away. So we do try to uh, manage this. But of course, uh, if you're really keen on the program, I would strongly encourage you to put in your application early if you can. Yes, because, uh, you know, when we are down to the, say, the last 10 spaces in the program, naturally, the bar gets higher. It's not that because uh, we, we want to, but because, uh, yeah, of the intense competition uh, to get into the program. So, well, start working on your application. If you don't have all the supporting documents, it's okay. You can start working on it. And then as, uh, and then even after you submitted your application, you can continue to update, uh, the supporting documents to your online application. Yes. Perfect. Um, another question, it, it's kind of specific to a, to the, to finance. Um, so this student was, or prospective students interested in knowing the difference in career prospects versus the, and concentration in the MBA program in finance versus the specialized masters in finance? Mm -hmm. Well, so uh, actually, uh, okay, um, for, for Nyan Business School, the specialized master's program in finance is actually a very interesting program. It's actually taught in uh, English and Chinese, so it's bilingual. So for a student to enroll in that program, you need to be proficient in Chinese. So, which is why we, we didn't really share in this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, session, uh, because it's a very unique program. So for our MBA program, we do have a track that is uh, in banking and finance. So I think for MBA program versus a specialized master's program, it really depends. Uh, I think the main difference is in terms of the profile of the students. If you see uh, all our specialized master's program do not require any work experience, but for MBA program, there is a strict minimum two years of work experience. Hence the people in the program is very different. For our MBA program, uh, the average uh, age uh, um, you know, work experience that we have is about five to eight years. But in our MSCs program, they are usually uh, fresh graduates or, uh, or professional in their early careers, uh, usually less than five years. So in terms of uh, what you expect of the program will be quite different. MBA, uh, you know, you study a lot more things, uh, marketing, economics, uh, you know, HR, and then you specialize in the banking and finance, but for a specialized master, you just dive deep into the area that you have chosen. So it's quite different. Depends on what you want to do in your career. <laughs> yes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so I know that there's the optional internship after several of the programs. And so mm -hmm. in regards to completing an internship, are the students expected to find one themselves or mm -hmm. is there support that's provided by NBS? to find those internships. Yeah. Maybe I'll share this. So uh, with regards to the internship, our GSDO, the one that I've shared earlier, they do help our students find uh, internships. Of course, if the students is able to find one of uh, on their own, that's perfectly fine. But what we do is that we try to match our students with potential part internships. We do see internships as a very integral part of the job hunt. A lot of companies, uh, especially the consulting companies, are actually using that as a way to uh, look at candidates uh, in a way to assess them and assess their suitability for the program. So uh, I would 
I would say that a lot of our students do go in for internships uh, at the end of the program in order to help them secure jobs. And a lot of times it, it does help them because uh, it brings the trust and it also helps to establish them as a candidate for the, for the role after the internship. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so in terms of the application process, you know, the GMAT or, or GRE being required for some of the programs, is it negatively viewed if you have multiple attempts on the GMAT or is that seen as a positive in your application? Uh, I think for us, uh, we look at the final score, uh, I mean, the best score that you have. And of course, um, uh, we, we do see that, uh, you know, multiple attempts, I mean, we don't view it negatively. It just shows that you really have the tenacity, the drive to, you know, keep on improving yourself. Yes. Yeah, so so we, we don't view it uh, as a negatively because we don't know how hard it is to prepare for GMAT wow. uh, exams. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so staying with the GMAT or, or the GRE, does a high uh, standardized exam score help compensate for a low GPA, say a 2.2, 2.5 or anything below a 3.0? Okay, maybe I share this. So um, for us, when we are looking at applicants, we look at it from a holistic admission process. So GPA is definitely one of the things that we are looking at. GMAT is also another thing that we'll look at. We also are looking at things like, for example, your motivation for joining the program. What is your career goals and things like that. In order to ensure that we have the most, uh, most suitable candidate, of course, a GPA that is low uh, would would negatively impact. But what we are also looking at is specific modules. So for example, if let's say you are somebody who is very good at maths modules, maths related modules, and you're applying to say a financial engineering program, then of course, in some sense, we would be able to look at those individual modules and try to establish a better picture. Um, that being said, it is always competitive. Admissions is always uh. something that we unfortunately have to make sure that it's uh, something that we are forced to do in the sense so um we will try our best to make sure that everybody gets a case or their case hurt in that sense absolutely and so <clears throat> other than a gmat off you know helping offset a uh, a low gpa how else can someone address a, a weakness in their application well, that's a very good question. <laughs> yes, I, I think um, we, we want uh, uh, your resume um, really tells a lot about uh, your yourself. So I think in terms of res resume, don't just put in, um, you, you know, like the, your, your, your job description, but rather highlight to us the mm -hmm. achievements that you have uh, made in your work, in your internship. I think that that is what we like to see as well. And in terms of the essay questions, I think they're a perfect way for you to express things that you may not be able to put in your resume uh, to give us a little nugget about yourself that we, you know, we sometimes uh, may not be able to read uh, or, or infer from a, um, from a, what do you call that, the resume. And of course, if you are shortlisted for an admission interview, the admission interview is your chance to shine and, and you know, uh, show the, uh, your suitability, uh, you know, for the program uh, to the interviewers. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so how much credit does the admissions committee give to the extracurricular activities in the admissions process? Okay, maybe I'll share this part. So uh, in terms of extracurricular activities, we definitely need to see the nature of it. Uh, if you are taking up a leadership role, that is definitely something we look at. But we're also looking at things like recency. So if it's something that happens while you're in middle school, then obviously it's not going to be as uh, as useful as some as something that you have done in, in college. Um, in terms of also the kind of activities we are looking for, um, what we are trying to establish here is an interest. So for example, if let's say you are applying to the financial engineering program and you have you are part of an investment society, then obviously those will be very those will be very good achievements that we can look at because it is very relevant to the program. It also shows an interest in the pro uh it shows an interest in portfolio management. So those will be the things that I would really advise students to highlight as part of the whole process. Absolutely. 
Um, a comment that or a question that came in, and, and you touched on it in your in your presentation, but maybe you know, kind of touch on it again for those who may have joined later. Is is the GMAT mandatory for the master's programs uh, at MBS? Okay. Kenny, you want to answer? Sure. Yeah. So um, for our programs, our specialized <coughs> masters, we actually uh, require GMAT for three of the four specialized masters. The only mm -hmm. exception will be our masters of science in marketing science. So that program, GMAT is optional. But for the other three programs, the MSc in accountancy, MSc in financial engineering, and MSc in business analytics, we do require GMAT or GRE. Perfect. Thank you for answering that again. Um, so what does the ideal candidate look like for NBS? Maybe Regine, you want to start there or share a bit? <laughs> okay, yeah. sure. So I think it, it really depends uh, on the different programs. Um, so for example, for MFE, uh, we need somebody who is very strong in quant background because of uh, how much quant is uh, required in the program itself, in the curriculum. So if you come from a very like a language background, immediately you're not competitive candidate already. Yes. So for example, um, if you are interested in marketing, so I, I would like to see something uh, that links, uh, that, that uh, expresses your, re your interest in, in, in marketing, like what Kenny has shared. Uh, if you, you, know, you say you're interested in something, maybe what you have done outside, you take a Coursera courses that it is in that area. You try to find internship that is related to that. So I think that's what we look at. We also, um, we'll, like, uh, like Kenny mentioned, we look at uh, each applicant very holistically. So it's not just the academic achievements that is very important. We also look at the, uh, the non-academic achievements as well as the potential that you have. So we are also looking at uh, alignment of career goals. So we want um, our students to be in the program and we want to able to be the one to help them to place them in the next career. Uh, so that is what we, we like to do. So th th there has to be something that, uh, you know, we want to help our students, not just for them to, you know, yeah. apply to any program with us. Yeah, I think that is uh, what an ID candidate uh, would like to me. Kenny, is there anything else that you would like to add? So, of course, uh, I mean, what you have said makes uh, all the sense. And I would say the other thing that you can add on is really that interest. So, for example, if you're applying to financial engineering and then you share with us, like, have you done investment? And uh, even if you have not done investment, how are you uh, mm -hmm. updated on things like the financial news? Of course, uh, right now we see what is happening in the options market, in the securities market that is just happening yeah. in GameStop. So yeah. if, you, if you are somebody who is interested in this, you definitely would have to read more about it. You have mm -hmm. to be yeah. able to talk more about it so as to be able yeah. to have a good conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll ask one more quick question because we have just a couple minutes left here. Um, are there any changes in the start date expected for this next intake? And then also, are they are the students going to be expected to be on campus in Singapore or is it going to be partially virtual? How's that going to be done? Okay, that's a very valid question in terms of the, this uh, uncertainty. So uh, there is no change uh, in our start date. Uh, we are still intending to have the class starts in uh, around the third week of uh, July. So last year, uh, as in for the last uh, year in July, uh, the pandemic was in full blown. There was a border closure everywhere. We still right. start our courses uh or on time, but we start with a hybrid. So uh, students were able to actually start the class online at their home country where everybody safety is our priority. So right after when the border closures, uh, I mean, the restrictions are lifted, we're able to bring all the students in and by trimester two, all the students were already on campus in Singapore having in-person classes. Uh, but of course we have to ensure they have all the required, uh, you know, social distancing, mm -hmm and safety requirements or, uh, or met. Yeah, so, uh, well, we are not sure what will happen in July this year, so we are keeping our fingers crossed uh, <laughs> that the pandemic situation will continue to improve, uh, improve uh, globally, and yeah. uh, then everybody yeah. will be able to come on time. If, if, uh, if, well, if the worst case scenario happens, I guess it could be online classes uh, in the beginning, uh, yeah. Perfect. And then we bring everybody in. Yeah. Awesome. 
Awesome. All right. Well, Kenny, Regine, I want to thank you again for taking the time to spend, uh, you know, it's almost 1 a.m. where you guys are at. And, and so I want to thank you for, for uh, being here with us and sharing information about the NBS programs. Um, others who are watching, if you have questions, um, the contact details are in the comments. Um, make sure that you follow the links that are also dropped in the comments to register for the subsequent sessions. Um, with that, I'll, I'll wrap it up right here. You guys head to bed, have a good evening and, and stay safe. Thanks Thank for you so us. much, Josh. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you, Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.